but at one point we had a conference on, on some Jesuit anniversary, and one of the lead speakers said, um, yes, Fairfield was always set apart from the Jesuit institutions because they were all in the cities, and this one had all these rolling hills and woods. And when I came here, you know, there, you could get lost in the woods. Uh, that was in 1969. Uh, and they, there's a, there are woods and fields and, and, and little animals that would bite you sometimes. And, and so it, it, it was very, very rural. I went on an old farm road. I would walk down to the campus and cross the field out there. Um, just lots and lots of woods, wooden fields. And um, we thought that was just wonderful, but you know, we didn't get upset about the fact that they were popping up buildings all over these fields until really fairly recently. At no point did the faculty, let alone the administration, rally around the rural, uh, woodsy um, aspect of Fairfield University. In terms of the actual layout of the campus, um, the amount of woods, the amount of forest, the amount of uh, paths to go hiking in were tremendous compared to what it was now. You didn't have Costco, you didn't have Claver, so all that areas behind the library were all woods. You didn't have the artificial surface that you had up near um, the area where the townhouses were. So that was all grass and fields and, and trees. So you really had much more of a sense of a bucolic pastoral campus than you have now. Uh, when we arrived in September of 1966, the Verone Campus Center had just opened. That whole area was an old apple orchard, yet we didn't know anything about it. And uh, in the uh, mid to late 60s, everyone's preoccupation was really with uh, the Vietnam War and all the unrest that was going on in the country. So up until April of 1970, there really wasn't much concern about the environment. And then on April 22nd, 1970, uh, the first Earth Day, Professor John Klimas and Dr. Sal Bongiorno uh, from the biology department uh, really started to make students aware of what we were doing to the earth. My first year here was 1969-70 uh, and April 22nd was the first Earth Day and um, we had speakers and we, we sort of celebrated and I am still trying to catch my breath you know what is this Earth Day thing? You gotta remember that the protection of the environment is not very much in the Roman Catholic tradition. Also, they said, well, you know, protecting the trees is very nice, but we're in the, in the business of protecting poor people, it's much more important. And somebody suggested, well, maybe there's a connection, but that, that took a little while to work in. Probably the most common view is the view that the environment is useful for humans for some reason. So there's a value placed on, on the environment in some way, and that value is defined relative to you know, what humans could use that for, food, clothing, shelter, whatever. The level beyond that is this idea that it's not just humans or other species that are valuable, but it's the way that those organisms are connected with each other as well as the way that they're connected to the non-living environment. Probably in graduate school, I, that really came crystal clear to me but that, um, that more integrated view of what the surrounding environment is like and, and how important it is to preserve not just uh, individual species, but the way humans interact with the environment in a, in a sustainable way. We could talk about it with respect to the students. And we have actually a couple pretty active clubs on campus, the Student Environmental Association and the Green Campus Initiative, which, I mean, they don't necessarily have the highest profile on campus, but they do a lot of activities which make sure that um, in some ways, Fairfield is a, is a very green campus. When we have really good student leadership, the campus just sparkles with environmental enthusiasm. Uh, when we um, don't, it doesn't. And it's rather very little the faculty can do. So, um, we, you know, faculty did their damnedest just to keep them from cutting down those trees uh, down where the new parking lot's going to be, and it, it had absolutely no effect. And the, the administration goes back and forth between, um, oh, the, everything we decide is going to be decided collegially. And, well, you know, administrative decisions we make, we'll try to keep you informed, but, you know, we make them. Right now, the town wants us to put in this new parking lot because we have a new building coming on, and it needs more parking by, by law, by statute, and so forth. So now we've got this um, 
new parking lot there, and unfortunately, we're going to have to cut down some trees. Very, very easy answer. The space was needed. So if we were expanding and building a 200-plus uh, a bed residence hall, and we're expanding our programs for the community with a quick center lot, uh, more parking spaces are needed. Uh, the controversy really arose over the fact of almost a he said, he said situation where the administration may have thought that the faculty uh, proponents, uh, in fact, in fact the, the faculty who were against the lot um, knew and the faculty felt that they weren't informed, it comes back to a classic communication issue. I think a lot of us should be more informed about development planning. Um, the question is, does that ha carry any weight? Does it ha carry any power? They, um, the, the administration has repeatedly said, we'll try very hard to keep you well informed. But that doesn't mean they're going to change their mind about anything. And you know, we wanted to stop that, 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 those trees from being cut down. That little piece of woods was being used as a laboratory by one of our biologists. And nobody, he didn't find out that this, that this tree cutting was going to happen. Uh, until the very last minute, and, and then it was just too late to stop it. 